So I'm out for dinner with friends one night, and my pager goes off. And I see some of you confused. A pager was this high-tech thing <laughs> that it used to tell us to get to a phone that was attached to a wall to call somebody else who was at a phone. So I look at my pager, and it tells me that uh, I'm going to be working downtown. You see, I've been working for the ambulance for a little while now, but this is my first shift in the downtown core. I don't know why. I just really wanted to be down there. It's like being in baseball and being in the minor leagues, but this is your call up to the big leagues. I arrive at the station that day and I meet my partner. He throws me the keys and says, you're driving. So off we go. Busy day, all around town, flying around town. I'm just a kid barely into my 20s. I, matter of fact, I get back to the station at one point and I call, uh, I, I call my friends. I get on the phone and I say, yeah, I'm driving today. And they say, you're not driving. And I said, yeah, I am. No, no, they had other choices. They picked me today. So uh, I'm just having a great time. A few weeks later, I'm working in an area outside. I'm working uh, at a place in a residential area. And we go to a residential call for a child in distress. This time I'm attending, which means I'm taking care of the child. And it happened to be for a child in distress. So we arrive on scene. I get the, the bags out of the ambulance and I start to turn around and a babysitter comes running up to me and hands me an eight-month-old baby girl. She's, she's already deceased. And I, I'm not kidding you, my first thought. I'm just a kid. I'm just a kid. I get to work on her, we head off and off we go. Then the big day came where I became a firefighter. My big day, this is what I'd always wanted. I always wanted to be a firefighter. I dreamed of being a firefighter. This was the job that I wanted. I couldn't believe it, I finally achieved it. This is where I spent the next 24 years of my career. I was on a rescue unit for 12 years. We were a busy truck, tended most calls in the city. There was shifts where we'd do upwards of 20 runs in a 14 hour period. I moved my way up through the ranks became a lieutenant and a captain, started working as a battalion chief. The funny thing was, as my rank started to go up in my years of service, my mental health started to go down. My personality, it started to change. People saw it in me a little bit. I was, I was struggling. Things that used to be fun for me were no longer fun. Kids laughing, I, it, it was annoying. When I was at work, I was like a machine. That was my area. I, I felt nothing. I was good there. It was times when I was alone that was scary. I couldn't hold a relationship together. Broke up tons of relationships, people that cared about me. Lost friends. Stopped playing sports with my buddies. And ultimately started to drink heavily. At first just to sleep at night. Then more and more with free time, it was just to forget about the things that were going on. You see, I was just surviving. I was just surviving. I wasn't living. It's, it happens all the time in the work that I do now. I talk with, with military and, and first responders, and they tell me, Jeff, if I could just get to retirement, I'll be good. I'll get healthy then. But that's not how it works. I felt like that, that person in a movie, one of those action movies where the person gets shot and he looks and he says, it's a fatal wound. And he says, go on, save yourselves, I'll stay here and hold them off. I thought my story wasn't going to end well. I was completely lost at this time of my life. One night in 2016, I woke up in the hospital. I was on the uh, emergency room, covered in leads. I'd taken a lethal dose of, of alcohol and prescription painkillers. It was accidental, but here I was. It was out in the open. I thought I was lost before because I wasn't brave. Now I was really lost. Everybody knew. My wife knew, my friends knew, my family knew, my work knew. Oh sure they knew, but not to the extent that it was now. I had no other options left now. But this was my path. It's funny, I look back at that day now and I call it the best, worst day of my life. And I'll tell you why. 
I got put in front of a doctor. She was wonderful. She was put in my path for a reason. She specialized in trauma and substance. She understood first responders. I spent four or five, felt like days, but it was hours with her. I was struggling. I was broken. I just didn't know where to go. And I still remember at the end of it, I just felt like it was, it was hopeless. And I was leaning on her desk, and she reached across, and she put her hand on my hand. And she said, Jeff, you've been helping people for over half your life. Let us help you this time. Powerful words, just powerful. Empathy, I felt it. She got me involved in a cutting-edge program they had back east at the time. It specialized in first responders and military. It kept us together, and it dealt with the effects of trauma from years of service and substance. I went to this program thinking, here we go. I was in this room with my peers, and we would talk about things, the way we were feeling, the way we were acting, the things we'd done. And we'd look at each other, and I'd share something, and I'd think, oh, they're going to they're gonna hate me, and they'd all be going, yep. Or I'd share the stories of debauchery or things I'd done in, in the chaos. And, and they'd have something that was worse, very few times, but once in a while they would have something that was worse that they'd done. You see, slowly, I felt like I had a chance. I felt like I could live again. It brought me back to something that I've always been passionate about. I've always had shelves of books on philosophy, but especially Eastern philosophy. It's the thing that I loved. But my love went as far as to reading it, understanding it, knowing it to be true, and then putting it back on a shelf and going back to the chaos. I started implementing it in my life all the time. Mindfulness gratitude, empathy, and understanding that we have a path in life. You see, in Eastern philosophy, the lotus flower, it's synonymous with everything in it. Gratitude, empathy, kindness. The thing about the lotus flower is it comes from filth. It comes from the murkiest, muddiest, filthy waters. And when it blooms, it's pristine. There's not a drop of water, a drop of filth, a drop of mud on its petals. It's unbelievable. You see, it's the same thing for us. One of the biggest things for me now in the work that I do in crisis response, I go to the situations that you see on the news, the mass shootings, the crashes, they're, they're horrible situations. And I help the survivors to, to get through that first little bit and get them on track to get help. So often I look at them and I say, how are you doing today? And what do you think they say to me? I'm fine. No, fine's not a feeling. You could be hungry, horny, happy. Those are feelings. You can't be fine. It's not a feeling. And then they'll look at me and they'll say, Jeff, I'm never going to be normal again. And I tell them, you're right. You won't be that old normal again. But you're going to be a new normal. And our new normal is way better than the old normal. We call it post-traumatic growth. It means we learn from the things that we've been through. It makes us stronger. It's why someone who's given a death sentence of a terminal illness and they beat it, or they survive a crash they should have never survived, suddenly sunsets are, look different, or their own children's laughter is just unbelievable. Or they walk through a park they've walked through hundreds of times, and they see things they never saw or smell things they never smelled. You see, we all have that opportunity to grow, to get better, to get stronger. Just like that lotus flower, we can have a lotus nature, which means we develop and we grow. But the key to this is not keeping it to ourselves, it's to spread it around, it's to share it. And in some ways, sharing it is selfish because that's what makes us grow even more, that's what makes us stronger, that's what makes us feel good. If you've ever done charity work or volunteered, you know that feeling you get. When you have mindfulness in your life and you carry it with you and you spread it, you feel it. It's powerful. I, it's a call to action to all of you. You see, your path is right where you are meant to be right now. Everybody here was meant to be in this seat today. I don't know what the reason is. Instead of when we go through adversities and we go through difficulties, which we all do and will continue to do, instead of looking at the ceiling and going, why me? Why am I going through this? We have to question it. We have to say, where is this taking me? What is my path? What am I going to learn from this? 
And when we change our thoughts to that thinking pattern, it helps us to, to live, not just survive. It's a call to action for first responders. It's, it was one thing for me to go into a fire that, where my, my visor would start to melt or rappel off a bridge to, to save someone from their car be, before they plunge hundreds of feet. When I did those things, I didn't feel brave. That was my job. I wasn't brave enough to put my hand up and say, I don't feel good. I'm struggling. I don't like to be by myself. I don't like holidays. And so many people struggle with that, and they live. So many people say, if I could just hang on a little longer, I'll get help. It's a call to action to everybody here. Don't just survive in that muck and filth. Come out of it and live. Be pristine. Be kind. Be empathetic. Spread the Tao of a lotus nature and be mindful. Thank you.